It is we who should thank you. The records stored here are nothing short of extraordinary. There is much we could learn of Zodiac and his imprisonment. But perhaps you could offer us more focused guidance. Pray, tell us of the calamity that came before and comes now again. Were the ancients ever able to deduce its source? Steel currents. I cannot say I am familiar with the concept. So they sought a means to harness the forces of darkness, of activity and growth. Thus was Zodiac conceived. No less a power than a god's could set right the laws of nature and quicken the flow of ether within the star.
Emmett Selk claimed that those who summoned Hydaelyn did so because they saw Zodiac's power as a threat. Is that true? set in motion seven rejoinings before we came to oppose them. How many more worlds would have been lost had we not placed our faith in her? How many more souls living in the present would have been snuffed out for the sake of those long dead? Well, in light of recent events, I see no reason to doubt your words. And even if Hydaelyn is not a god in truth, if Minfilia believed that we should trust in her plans, then I choose to do just that. Which brings me to a rather important question. Let's suppose we try but fail to stop this second coming of the final days. Should the Source fall, what will become of the other worlds?
Yes, but what is it? Our moonship pilot should be around here somewhere. Is that right? and 243rd inspection is a mite ahead of schedule, but it is of the utmost importance, for Zodiac, alas, is no more. As of now, our mighty moon has a new purpose, to bear the people of Aetherius to safety. Our time is come, my friend. Be swifter than swift. There is much to do before our guests arrive. I expect your workstations to be immaculate. And don't forget to relay our signal to Etheris. Questions? Yes? No? Maybe so? No? Then hop to it! Is a rather curious crew she hath chosen. Their endearing forms intended to ease the passengers' hearts, perhaps. Perhaps? Specifically, 
I am the one whom she charged with the execution of her most vital plans. You might say I'm her right paw. <laughs> Loving ways, the name. Net breeder and navigator of the heavens. Pleasure to meet you all, but I'm still trying to make sense of this. Confusion and bewilderment are completely understandable. Fear not, I shall walk you through it. The people of Atherius, through no fault of your own, I'm sure, set in motion a series of events that, unfortunately, culminated in Zodiac's obliteration. Acutely aware of the imminent crisis, your parents sent you little ones on ahead while they began the necessary preparations. Still not following? No? Very well, I shall elaborate further. home and the moon where we are now without zodiac around to keep things lively so to speak the celestial currents of the star have doubtless begun to degrade a calamity of apocalyptic purport so too hath the watcher claimed by thine unperturbed countenance, I gather this eventuality was anticipated. The doom and gloom? Oh yes, quite expected. Imagine, if you will, that a Therese is a delicious carrot that I've forgotten to eat and left out in the midday sun. The most wishes or prayers will not stop it from rotting to the core. So sadly, there's nothing to be done but to abandon said carrot, Atheris, in case the metaphor is lost on you, to its grisly fate. And this moon will serve as the vessel to deliver us to a new home. Just so! We will gather up as many people, supplies and resources as our stores will hold. Once everyone is aboard, it's off to another star! Easier said than done, admittedly, for one does not simply hop from star to star on a whim, which is precisely why we've spent countless years constructing the most propulsive of propulsion systems! We ought to make it to our destination in two shakes of a rabbit's tail. Impressive technology. I dare say it is beyond anything we have ever seen. No need to shower us with praise. All we've done is faithfully carry out the instructions left to us by Hydaelyn. Back in the old days, when she was still just Venar, she was dedicated to the study of the world and its inner workings. And the Watcher, the real one, not the simulacrum you met, was one of her fellow researchers. We and this wondrous vessel, masquerading as a moon, are products of their knowledge and know-how. There's certainly more to you all than meets the eye. Might I ask where exactly you intend to take us? We identified a few promising candidates for resettlement some time ago, but we cannot guarantee that they are fit for habitation. Moreover, the ship can only travel in short bursts. We intend to go down our list, hopping from star to star, until we find one suitable for resettlement. No need to worry, though. The vessel is being refurbished with accommodation for an extended stay as we speak. While we did have to rely upon outside help to determine what immunities were essential, 
I dare say we have risen to the challenge. Help? From who? <laughs> From you and yours! Who else? Each time we woke to perform regularly scheduled maintenance, we were greeted by the resources you sent us. What better way to learn about preferences and proclivities of our present-day charges? Ah, oh, but you're still adorable little children. Perhaps your elders were responsible for the deliveries. I'm not sure what led you to conclude otherwise, but I can assure you that we are all grown men and women. And I very much doubt my elders know this place exists, much less how to send you so much as a starlight missive. What? Then who in blazes let you on my moon? Heidelin herself led you here. Well, Amorotines were a great deal taller. In the present day, persons of such prodigious size are exceedingly rare. So, you're saying everyone's not like the Watcher? Oh, confound it all! Someone could have at least scribbled a note about your profound miniaturization! That tome in thy possession. minor corrections and updates as needed. The sum total of our knowledge of your kind is contained in these pages. I thought it was abridged and made small for our benefit, but this isn't a regular sized book, is it? Tell us a bit more about your terrestrial collaborators. Yes, yes, in due time. But first, I'd like to hear more about you, if it's all the same. I'd rather not risk any other complications due to outdated knowledge of our passengers-to-be. Ready in the teleporter. to living quarters restricted due to reconstruction. Then where is it? Oh no! A private audience, as thou didst request. For reasons I know not. I'd rather I didn't have to ask the question at all, but I take my responsibilities very, very seriously. Do you and your friends by any chance find our accommodation wanting? Be honest, brutally even. 
would be ungracious of me to belittle the efforts of the Indine. Lovely sentiment, really. But the disappointment is writ plain on your comrades' faces. It's all the more frustrating since no one will come out and say what they find wanting. If there are faults in our work, we need to know. We can, we will do better. But time is not on our side. The final days will wait for no one. If your people are to be saved, we must take quick and decisive action. This vessel must serve as a home for as many passengers as possible for far longer than we may like. Which brings me to my request. Our collaborators on Atheris are doing what they can to prepare for the voyage. Would you be willing to go and lend them a hand? Having seen the moon for yourself, you could speak to its many splendors, learn what else they might require, and assuage whatever concerns they have. Wherefore wouldst thou entrust me with such a task? How to put it? You're the only one who appears not to be wholly unsatisfied with our work. Oh, quite good at pretending that's the case, at least. Calm, collected, tactful to a fault. Very particular with your words, too. You understand that, in the face of great danger, one cannot pursue perfection at the expense of practicality. The difficult choices must often be made for the greater good. <sighs> and so fate doth conspire to set my feet upon this path once more. Come again? Ah, idle musings. Tis no trifle, thou dost ask. Yet full well do I understand the urgency and necessity. I... Oh, dear me! Dear me! I was terribly sorry for the mix-up! <laughs> it's a bit of a malfunction. I hadn't realised the residential quarters were inaccessible, you see. But you're still in one piece. So... All's well that ends well, yes? Uh, won't happen again. I promise. An arrival is timely as ever. Thou didst chance to overhear my conversation with Living Way, I presume? It was not mine intent to move in shadow. Nevertheless, I have been asked to do that and more yet again. Is it so plain that these strangers could intuit it at a glance? My capacity for silence and secrecy and duplicity? When Grahatia did contrive to deliver the first at the price of his own life, I was complicit in the scheme. A sacrifice averted for a mercy. Would that I could say the same for Menphilia. One life for one world. And by that bloody bargain, brokered by my hand, were the scions robbed of a dear comrade, and Flamine, her beloved daughter. Two souls, whose selflessness was beyond measure, whose resolve was unshakable. They would not be moved, even had I thought to protest. 
but protest I did not. Far from it. I pushed them forward. No effort did I make to seek out alternatives, ones that would not demand such terrible costs. That resignation weighs heavy on my mind, as does the memory of another lost to mine inaction. Dearest Moonbreather, who did face death unflinching, that we might secure a means to bring low the Asians. In her hour of need, I did naught. Dutiful disciple of Louisois, ever looking to the greater good. Had I shut mine eyes and bid her live instead, mayhap she would be with us today. Selfish wants born of everlasting regrets. Most days I put them from my mind, but could think of naught else when asked to swallow the same bitter draught. Subterfuge and sacrifice. Mayhap the right moral choice, but one I regard with great trepidation. The calamity of Amorot was a tragedy beyond reckoning, one which must never again come to pass. Thus must we struggle, haunted by ghosts of those we have lost, clinging to those we pray we can yet save. But what of those we cannot? How do we make peace with the dreadful algebra of necessity? Sage counsel indeed. I see. Wisdom as befits a great worm. Curious that he should think thee in need of such encouragement. Strange. Scarcely can I remember when last we spoke alone, and so candidly. Supposed skill with words, I find it difficult to express such private thoughts. As for the Loperitz proposition, I will take time and consider how to respond. It would be to our mutual benefit if we could converse more openly with our aspiring caretakers. A concern I should be glad to address on the Scion's behalf. To dispense with all pretense and bear one's heart to another is a frightening thing indeed. But we cannot move forward ere we take that bold first step. A lesson I have learned many times before. And today. And uh, what, pray tell, do we seek at the Watcher's Palace? Oh, come off it, friend! You know full well why 
why we're here. The time has come for you to return to Atheris and help your brethren prepare for their journey here and beyond. Forgive me, Living Way, but I cannot in good conscience proceed with this plan. Huh? But what about the final days? The death and the doom? Oh, we have to hurry before it's too late! Your unflagging commitment to your duty is endearing, to say the least. They bear you no grudge, nor do I. How could we, having come to understand your purpose? For millennia, you and yours worked tirelessly towards the singular purpose of this heavenly vessel's construction. An arduous feat by any measure. It is clear you have spared no effort. Why, your very names are a testament to your dedication. Names are an expression of the self, a declaration of one's hopes and aspirations. Your use of contemporary, uncomplicated nomenclature doth ensure clarity of purpose. There can be no doubt that your love for the people of Atheris is boundless and pure. of the day when this vessel might be needed. All I've ever wanted was to meet those she cherished so dearly. To serve and serve well. That goes for all of us. Don't you see? So help us. Help us help them. Lead them here where we can keep them safe. If there's anything wrong with what we've built, we'll fix it. We'll make it right. Your works want not for repair. Yet there remaineth much for you to learn of men and your own kin besides. Singing way. Thy name bespeaketh more than the simple marriage of rhythm and rhyme. The songs of Atheris are beyond counting and span the length and breadth of emotion. Maps are monuments to man's pioneering spirit and his devotion to charting the furthest reaches of our star. Many have devoted their lifetimes to exploratory pursuits to venture unto the highest mountains and the deepest oceans in search of unknown frontiers. And thou, my friend, I... Oh, I did not think we had met. My... My name is Puddingway. Puddingway? Yes, indeed. A name of deep and abiding significance, I'm sure, but one perhaps better communicated through delicious deeds than tasteless words. A judicious application of fey magics at a later juncture may be appropriate. <clears throat> uh, 
and living way. <laughs> it is no easy feat to convey the significance of thy moniker. Hmm. When I was a bookish boy, a dear friend of mine was fond of peppering me with questions as I read, to my occasional annoyance. One day, I posed to her a question of mine own. What does it mean to live? After much contemplation, she proffered this answer. The anticipation of a half-read story's conclusion. The hope today's mistake may serve as tomorrow's lesson. The wish that a new acquaintance may one day call thee friend. She believed it to be all these moments and more. I... I want to understand, but... I, too, still labor to find mine own answer. It would be my pleasure to assist you and yours in embarking on a journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. For thee. Ink as blue as the waters of a fairest. Made in haste, though I assure thee the quality has not suffered for it. The people need not be persuaded by honeyed words. Nay, I have faith they shall do what is right in due course. Until they do, I beg your patience, friends. And with that ink, let us fill the empty pages of Living Ways Compendium. An open exchange of ideas will surely afford you all a better understanding of modern man, and with it, Ideas for improvements and renovations. But more importantly, it shall empower us to together find a way forward. I hope you're right. Thank you for this lovely gift. There you have it. I shall remain with the Loperits to ensure that all is in order. Though we must needs prepare for every eventuality, you would all agree that the evacuation of our star is a last resort. To accept failure is to accept the demise not only of our star, but that of Reen's, of all reflections, and the souls that call them home. Which is why I have every faith that you shall fight to the last, that such drastic measures may prove unnecessary. Should the worst come to the worst, and I pray deeply that it won't, I'll take comfort in knowing preparations were made under your watchful eye. Aye, thou mayest be assured that if calamity cometh, not a soul will be left behind, if being the operative term. Of guests. 
Do convey our apologies to Growing Way and the others. But of course! And when next we welcome more guests from affairs, we'll have learned to be much more hospitable hosts. Oh, and circling back to the matter of inappropriate secrecy, we ought to discuss our benefactors. Agreed. The Charlian Forum, yes? What? How did you know? The more I heard, the more obvious it became. The Forum's aims align closely with those of your anonymous patrons. A telling coincidence would be an understatement. Though had we not taken it upon ourselves to peruse certain restricted tones in Labyrinthos, we might still be unaware of their plans. But let us continue this discussion upon our return. I dare say we have kept Alphano and the others waiting long enough. <laughs>